Alright, so hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in today's video we're going to be creating a easy and simple horse racing game using Python. So to begin with I'll give you guys a quick demo of what the games looks like. So let me run the program quickly and here it is. So it's a basic uh, UI and there's basically two horses like there usually is. You can obviously add more horses in once you learn about the implementation. Um, you can play it with two people so one of each person selects a horse for themselves and when you have selected your horse you will click on play now when you click on play you see a trashy animation because it's a beginner tutorial and one of the horses will win at random so each time we run the game we can expect um, a different horse to win sometimes the same horse may win but this is at random possibilities so as you just saw the implementation of the game of how it works we are now going to jump into the code so to start with, I'm going to close this off and we need a folder structure. So we're going to create a new folder and I'm going to call the folder horse racing, quite appropriate for what we're creating. And then I'm going to open up the folder real quick. Inside the folder, we need another folder called images because we need the red horse and blue horse images that we just saw on screen before. And the images folder is where we're going to be putting the red and blue horse uh, images. So I've got them on my desktop. I will be cutting them and pasting them into my images folder. Now I will obviously put a zip file with all the uh, scripts and images that are required to run this game in the description. So if you guys need that, you can head over to the description and download it as well. So first things first, let's create a new file in VS Code. And before we do that, if you're using VS Code, what you want to do is I'm going to close this folder right now. And what you want to do is drag this folder um, into your VS Code screen. That way it will load the folder in as sort of like a workspace so you don't have to type in full image links and stuff when you're importing images, which is great. So now that we've got the folder in for horse racing, we see our images directory that we created earlier. We want to create a script file or a new Python file in the horse racing directory. So you just click on this icon for new file and I'm just going to call this uh, horse racing.py quite rightfully. Now that we're done with that, what we want to do is we want to actually import the modules that we're going to be using okay so i'm going to zoom in a little bit and so the modules that we're going to be using for this tutorial are tikinta so from tikinta import star which means we're going to import everything from tikinta if you guys are new to tikinta i will be linking a playlist for tikinta beginners which is quite fun to learn from in the description so make sure to check that out as well so let's import Tekinta. We will also be needing time because we would want to sleep during our animation so that our frames play out smoothly. And we will also need to import a module called random because we need the horses to move at random speeds or steps. Cool. So now that we're done with that, we want to actually create the main screen using Tekinta. So let's create a comment and we'll say setting up the main screen. Now. To start with, we're going to create a new variable called main screen, and then we're going to equal that to tk. Now that initializes the tkinter tk um, object, and it will create like a like a window. So if I run this now, you give it a quick second, um, and it, nothing happens. That's because it actually shows up, but we need to put the main screen into a sort of loop, so that it keeps running until someone clicks on the exit button in the UI. So you always want to do main screen dot uh, main loop without the uh, snake case in the middle to make sure that the screen doesn't just close off straight away. So we run this again, uh, we wait for it to load up and my little window has loaded up on my first monitor, which I'm gonna drag in right now. And this is what you'll see. So we successfully created a tiny window. Cool, so that's the first thing done. What we want to do is everything that we're going to add onto this screen is going to go between the initialization of the screen and the main loop because we want it to run uh, sort of because obviously code runs from line one to line 10. We want to make sure that the rest of the stuff that goes on the screen is in the middle of the main loop. Otherwise, it will get excluded. So first things first, we're going to change the title of our screen. So we're going to do screen main screen dot title and we're going to call it force racing. And then we are also going to change the size of our screen because it was quite small as we saw. So I'm going to do main screen dot geometry and 600 by 500. 
Now, obviously these numbers are familiar with me because I've already programmed this stuff. So I already know what size I want to go with and what positioning I'm going to use. So if you want to follow through, that's uh, you're more than welcome to, or you can experiment with your own numbers as well. So I'm also keen on changing the background of the main screen to white because by default it is gray, which is sort of boring for the game. So I'm going to do main screen .config, and then in config, I'm going to provide the background to be white. Now at this stage, we're going to quickly run this program to see what it looks like. And as you see right here, first thing we did was change the titles. The title up here has indeed changed to horse racing. We set the geometry, so the screen size to 600 by 500 pixels. That's reflected as well, and it's all white right now. So perfect. Everything we done has worked successfully. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a canvas on our screen. So the canvas is where we can add stuff like images and objects uh, that basically move around. And Tikinta basically allows us to do that. So we want to create a new canvas and we want to attach that canvas to our screen. So we create a new variable called canvas, just like we did for the main screen. And then we equals that to canvas with a capital C, which is part of the Tikinta library. And then we need to provide where it's going to be sitting on. So it's going to be sitting on the main screen. We need to provide a width, which I'm going to assign it to 600 and height, which I'm going to say is going to be 200. Now we also need to provide a background Well, you don't have to, but I'm going to provide a background of white. And then lastly, you need to position it on your screen as well. So I'm going to say canvas.pack basically, which means put the canvas in the middle of the screen and I'm going to add a padding on the Y axis of 20 pixels as well. Now, when we do this, we will see that we have a canvas in the way we asked it to be positioned and in the size that we asked it to be positioned as, uh, as well. You see these little borders which are sort of the canvas at the minute. So this is going to be where the two horses are going to be and they're going to do their moving stuff in the canvas. Cool. So we've created the screen, we've created the canvas, we're going, we're doing great so far. Now what we want to do next is actually import the images that we're going to use for the different horses into our program. I'm going to quickly expand the images folder to see what I called the names of each file. Obviously, feel free to use your own images as well, but then you're going to have to use different sizes and uh, dimensions to what I'm using. So to import the images, let's make a new comment and say adding uh, images to canvas. And I'm also going to make a comment up here saying that we are setting up the canvas. OK. So to add the images to actually, this is uh, wrong. We're going to import the images first and then we're going to add them to the canvas. OK, so we have to actually import the images into variables sort of first, uh, resize them next, and then we add them to the canvas. So we create a variable first. So red horse image and then we equal that to photo image. And then the file is we need to basically pro uh, provide the link to the file. So I'm going to say it is in my images folder and it is called redhorse.png. As we can see right here, it's called redhorse.png. Now we copy and paste the same line over again. And I'm going to change red horse image to blue horse image because it's a different image now. And I am going to change the link to my file. I'm going to change red horse to blue horse because I've named my images sort of with the same conventions to make it easier on myself. Cool. At this stage, if you run your program, you will not see any change because obviously you haven't added these images to your canvas just yet. You have only sort of imported them into your program and assigned them to variables. So we actually need to resize these images first. So let's resize the images. So resizing the images. Now first we're going to resize the red horse image. So we're going to do red horse image is equal to and then red horse image dot zoom 15. Feel free to play around with this number because I have played around already and I find that it's a perfect size for me to use. Now we also need to do something else to it. So we need to do red horse image equals red horse image dot sub sample. That will make sure that the image has been actually reduced in size because initially these images are quite big. If I show you the blue horse image is quite big. So is the red horse. So I'm reducing it to the size I need it to be. We're going to do the exact same thing with our blue horse image. We're going to overwrite the previous one with the resized one. So we're going to do blue horse image dot zoom. And for this one, we're going to do 50 as well. But for the subsample, we are going to use 90. 
Now, I remember tinkering around with this a little bit because the blue horse image is bigger than the red horse image when it's initially downloaded. So it needs to be shrinked more than the red horse image so that they're sort of the same size. Once again, feel free to play around with these numbers. It will actually help you learn. So once we're done with that, what we want to do next is uh, we want to add these images to our canvas because we've imported them, we've resized them. Now it's finally time to add them to our canvas. So adding images to the canvas. Cool. So to add them, we need to actually assign them to a new variable because when we add these things to our canvas, they're sort of objects that you can control. So the image is attached to this sort of uh, object that you can't really see that you can control. So we create a new variable called red horse because this is the actual red horse and not an image. So red horse equals canvas dot create image. And then what we're going to do is we're going to provide an X axis. We need to provide an X axis, a Y axis. We're also going to provide um, an anchor which is going to be set to northwest. That's just where the anchor of the image is going to be. And then we need to provide where to pick this image from. Now, the image is obviously stored in our red horse IMG variable up here because we resized it as well. So we use that image. But for the X and Y, we are actually going to create dedicated variables for this. So let's quickly create variables for our X and Y for the red horse and the blue horse. Now, I would suggest that we go all the way up to up in the file and just after we import random, we create a new file and then we put the X and Y axis for these horses up here. So I'm going to create a new variable called red horse X. I'm going to assign that to zero red horse Y assign that to 20 blue horse X. Uh, I'm going to assign that to minus 28 and blue horse Y. I'm going to set that to 110. Now you might say, how do I already know this? That's because I've already got them written up and tested to, uh, and these are the same sort of numbers I use for the X and Y positioning for the program I demoed in the start of the tutorial. So if you want to follow along with these same numbers, feel free to do so. Otherwise you can pause and then quickly figure out what numbers you want to go with as well. That's fine too. Cool. So that now that we got these variables set up, what we want to do is actually use them over here. So since this is the red, red horse, we're going to use the red horse X. And since, since it's the red horse again, we're going to use the red horse Y. Cool. Let's quickly run this to see if our red horse will actually appear on our canvas. So I run it at this point and wonderful, no errors. And it actually shows up where I positioned it, which is to the left of the screen and sort of to the top. Perfect. Let's do the same thing with the blue horse. So I'm going to close this again. And let's do blue horse is equal to canvas dot create image. We need to use the blue horse X and Y this time, which we created a second ago, blue horse Y. And we need to set the anchor to Northwest again, because it's the easiest one to position in my opinion. And the image is going to be blue horse image, which was previously uh, resized as well up here. Cool, cool, cool. So let's run this again and we will see that we have two horses nicely positioned. The blue one is clipped off a little bit, but the winning criteria will make it fair enough, which I will explain later. Cool. So let me close this down. Uh, close this as well. Now that we've got everything set up, we mainly need to design the labels that will tell the player what to do. Uh, basically, the text is what is referred to as labels, and we need to create the button that will allow the player to start the game. So to create the labels, I'm going to um, create a comment first, Let's say adding labels to screen and text in brackets, because obviously labels is just text in a way. So we're going to do L1 is equal to label, which is going to go on main screen. So L1 is just a variable that we create, just like we use a variable to create a canvas image and all the other stuff. So label, which goes on the main screen and the text is going to be equal to select your horse. Cool. Now we're also going to use a custom font, which I'm going to use Calibri. You might need to look up the documentation to see what other fonts they have. And I'm going to go with 20 pixels of um, basically the how big I want my font to be. I'm also going to specify that the background on my label is going to be white because by default, once again, it's going to be gray and it's not going to match with a uh, white background of the overall main screen. So we want that to match. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to place this on my screen. So I'm going to do 
l1.place. Now, instead of pack, I'm doing place because I specifically want to um, mention the x and y axis where this is going to sit. So I want it to sit on x 230 and y 280 units. So let's run this quick to see if that looks okay. And indeed, it looks okay. It's sort of centered and it's where I want it to be. It's got the custom Calibri font and 20. Uh, it's 20 units big. Cool. Let's move on to creating the next uh, label, which is just going to say click play when ready. So L2 is equal to a new label, which is going to go on our main screen. Text is going to be equal to click play when ready. Once again, we're going to use my favorite font, Calibri, with a font size, I believe, of 20 as well. Again, just to keep things consistent. And we're going to set background to white. Now I'm going to do l2.place and this time we're going to have to use a different x and y axis because we want it to be placed below the previous label. So x is going to be 200 and y is going to be 330. Now obviously I have these values written once again guys so feel free to use your own after experimenting. Okay, So let's run this again just to make sure the second label has showed up and it indeed has showed up. Now the only thing we have to do is create a button that says um, play uh, and then we will be good to program the main sort of logic of the game. So let's create a button, create a new variable called b1 and assign that to button which is part of the Tikinta library once again. It's going to sit on our main screen, the text is going to be set to play, feel free to change that if you want. I can set the height, so I'm going to set that to 2 units and I'm going to set the width to 15. Once again, feel free to play with, play with these. I will change the background of the button to white because by default I believe it is grey. I'm going to change the font on the text of the button to Calibri and this time we're going to go with just 10 as the font size and I'm going to then place the button. So I'm going to do b1.place x is equal to 250 and y is equal to 390. Cool, cool, cool. Let's run this quickly and let's see if that worked. Okay, so there is an error and I'm just trying to see where the error is. Um, okay, let's see. Calibri b1.place b1 is equal to button. We've got the text, we've got the height, we've got the width. I'm pretty sure it's something really tiny, but I can't seem to spot it at the minute. Uh, unknown option weight. Let's try again. Unknown option weight. Okay. Oh, I, I typed in weight instead of width. Sorry about that. I'm not sure how I managed to do that, but okay. Let's run this again. And if I look at it now, we have a button, but obviously it's a dumb button because we click on it and it literally doesn't do anything. So what I'm going to do with this is we need to assign this button to a function. So whenever it's clicked, a function is run and the game can actually do something. So we are going to go to the button again. So where we created the button, we're going to use comma and then we're going to use something called a command. And a command basically lets us assign the button to a function. So each time this button is clicked, a function will be run. So we will assign this uh, button to a function called start game. Now the start game doesn't exist. The function start game doesn't exist just yet because we haven't created it. So that's what we're going to be doing next. So this is all really that we need to do on the decoration side of things and the GUI. So that's all the tough bit out of the way, I would say. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually create the functions that's going to sort of be the main me of this program. So I'm going to go at the top where I last declared my blue horse Y, create a new line, and we create the function start game that we assigned to the button. Now in here, we want to make the blue horse X a global value. We want to make the red horse X a global value so that the function can see it. And we want to also create a new variable outside, just under random, called winner, and we assign that to false. So this winner variable is later going to help us find out which horse won. So I'm going to create winner as a global variable in start game as well, because it needs to access it. So these variables will make sense in a bit, but we just need them in this function at the minute. So what we need to do, first of all, is we need to create some helper functions. 
for this function to actually work. So helper functions are just going to help this function do some tasks with ease and make our code a bit more readable. So the helper functions we're going to need is we need a function that will help us move the horses. So let's create that first. So def move horses. Now this function will take in a two parameters. So red horse random move and uh, blue horse random move. Ooh, random move. Cool. So basically red horse random move is going to be how many steps we want the random uh, horse to move and blue horse is how many steps we want the blue horse to move at random. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the canvas variable we created below before right here and we're going to use that to move our images. So we're going to do canvas.move which is an inbuilt method again and then we want to move the red horse and we want to move it by on the x-axis we want to move it by red horse random move and on the y-axis we don't really want to move it we just keep it the same we don't move the y-axis at all because we don't want it going down we just want it going from left to right we do the exact same thing for the blue horse so we do canvas.move blue horse because we want to move the blue horse and we want to move it how many steps on the x-axis is going to be told to us by the blue horse random move parameter and we don't want to move it any steps on the y-axis we just want it to be consistent perfect so that's the move horses function ready which is good now we can just whenever we want to move any horse we would literally just have to do move horses and then we provide how many steps we want the red horse to move and how many steps we want the blue horse to move but obviously these will be generated at random cool so that's the tough bit sort of done and then we need another helper function which is going to help us check consistently check whether a horse has won so we will call this function check winner so we create another function called check winner and we are going to say if the blue horse x which is up here if the blue horse x is greater or equal to 550 which i calculated and it was the end of sort of the end of the canvas if it's greater or equal to 550 and the red horse x is greater or equal to 550 then we return a tie so basically that means both horses won at the same time because obviously they're both both the x-axis equal to 550 which is the finish line we need to do two more conditions we're going to say if blue horse x is greater or equal to 550 then we return blue horse because blue horse wins and we need another one which is going to be if red horse x is greater or equal to 550 we return red horse because obviously in this case the red horse wins since its x-axis is greater or equal to 550 and if none on the none of these if conditions are um well are satisfied then we just return false which means whenever this function is run if any of these positions so if any, none of these horses have won the function will just return false so we just keep carry on the game cool now that we have all these helper functions ready we, it's time to make sense out of this so we'll go to our start game function now we globalized a few variables in here which was the blue horse x and the red horse x we're going to be updating these as well to keep track of where the horse is at the moment so that we can use the check winner function as well so first things first we have to run a loop so we want to keep uh, running this game until a horse wins and when the horse wins is when the loop should break basically so we're going to say while winner is equal to false we're going to keep running obviously that means that there there's no winner been declared yet so winner is just at false consistently so when we run our loop what we want to do first is sleep for a fraction of a second i would say so 0 0.05 and then th we do the sleep because every time we move a horse we want to actually see it move if we don't do a sleep it will be so quick that we can't actually see it so we do the sleep to to for basically for for us to see the movement now that we've done our sleep we're going to actually create a variable called random move blue horse oh zoomed out by accident blue horse and we'll assign that to a random number so we'll do random dot rand int which is a method of the random library and we're going to pick a random number between 0 and 20. we will do exactly the same thing we'll create a random move red horse this time because we want both horses to have random moves and we use the same thing again we use 0 and 20 
just to keep it fair we keep it between the same ranges so uh, our program will pick at random between 0 and 20 for each uh, horse also I just realized that I used a single equal over here it's meant to be a double equal because we're not assigning we are checking so we have our random moves ready so we can actually update update the x positions of both horses now we globalize the blue horse x and red horse x so we will update them with whatever random move they just received so we will do blue horse x uh, plus equals which means it's going to update it with whatever it was previously it's going to add on to it the random move that was just produced so random blue horse move and red horse x plus equals red under move red horse cool so at this point we are doing great we have a random move for the blue horse and the red horse and we're updating their x-axis as well with whatever move they have so now that we have done that we actually need to move the horses on the screen so we're going to use our move horses function that we previously created down here and we're going to provide it with the red horse random move and the blue horse random move which is up here so we're going to say random move red horse first because look at the parameters we're asking for the random uh move for the red horse first so we do that first and then secondly we do blue horse uh sorry random move uh blue horse cool so we're going to use the move horses function to randomly move the red horse and randomly move the blue horse based on the numbers we get between 0 and 20 over here perfect now when you move this when you move these horses you need to do something called you need to update the main screen because otherwise once again the movement is going to be too swift and we won't be able to see it so we're going to actually update the main screen every time we move the horses so we're going to do main screen update now we are going to use the winner variable which we created up here and we're actually going to assign it to our check winner function which we created earlier now this is going to be false until a winner has been picked because we said we're going to keep returning false unless one of these conditions was satisfied and if one of these conditions were satisfied it would mean that it was either a tie or the blue horse one or the red horse one so we will update the variable with whatever the check winner function basically returns in most cases it will return false until it's either a tie the red horse wins or the blue horse wins cool so that is the main uh, bits of the game done really now the only uh, bit that we need to update or do is once the loop finishes or after the end of the loop which means the game has finished there has been a result in the in the in the race we go one and then back and we're going to say if winner is equal to tie which means there was a basically a draw then we're going to create a new label on our screen it's going to be set on our main screen uh the text is going to be winner which means it's just going to say tie and then we're going to use a font of calibri 20 we're going to use a foreground which is a color for the text i'm going to set it to green because obviously it's a positive outcome and we're going to use the dot place function now obviously you don't have to always use variables to use dot place so i'm going to use dot place on the label itself and i'm going to do x is 200 y is 450. now that's if we have a tie if anything else happens which is usually going to be either the red horse wins or the blue horse wins we create another label that sits on our main screen as well actually i might as well just copy and paste this over because everything remains the same so i'm going to copy the same label paste it down here the only ch thing that changes is we say winner plus space wins and exclamation mark if you want to so that's because if the blue horse wins then our function returns blue horse so the text is going to say blue horse and then we're adding more text that says wins so it's going to say blue horse wins if the red horse wins it's going to say red horse and we're adding more text which says wins so it's a red horse wins and if it's a tie then it will just say tie we don't add anything onto that now obviously you might have oh i might have moved a bit too much there you might have noticed that we didn't change the x and y on this one and that's because we don't actually need to change it because it's the outcome is going to be one or the other it's never going to be a tie and blue horse and red horse wins so it's either going to be a tie or the red horse wins or the blue horse wins so 
at this pace, I think we are ready to actually run this program and check if it works. So fingers crossed we don't have any errors and let's run it. Okay, cool. No errors so far. Pick your horses, guys. I'm going to say I'm going to go for red. Click on play. And it's looking like, oh, it was going in, the f in favor of red for a bit. Okay, cool. Red did win. Now, obviously, sometimes it may look like the other horse won, but this is very accurate because it uses the x-axis of both horses, which is being updated. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. And I see there's a little bug in our coding. The, when it says red horse wins, the background still remains uh, grey. The challenge for you guys would be to figure out this bug and make it uh, blend in with the background so the background for this label should be white let me know if you guys managed to figure out the challenge and I will feel really good about it because I would feel like I teach you some, uh, thought you something if you guys are interested in more of these tutorials please drop them down in the description uh, I mean comment box uh, We ha I also have a discord server guys where we are trying to build a community of junior and senior programmers so if you feel like you want to join that feel free to do so apart from that guys please Help me grow the channel by sharing the content, liking for the algorithm, and subscribing for more such tutorials. And guys, I will see your beautiful faces in the next one. Peace out.